Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Kate with Beautiful Light Home, and I am a Waldorf homeschooling mama to two kiddos. I uh, have done another video that's all about Waldorf kindergarten and the differences between a Waldorf kindergarten classroom and homeschool versus a traditional classroom for kindergarten. So if you'd like, you can find that video on my page. I also have a blog post dedicated to all of this. But today I'm going to be talking all about what are the areas of content that I'm focused on for planning our next year's Waldorf homeschool kindergarten class. So um, I've said this before in a previous video, but both of my children qualify for Waldorf kindergarten this year. Waldorf kindergarten is from ages four to six. My son will be six in August and my daughter will be four in September. So they both are Waldorf kindergartners. So I have five main areas that I'm looking at for planning content for the upcoming school year. The first is our circle time. Second is story time. Third is handwork. Fourth are watercolors, which might sound like a weird content area, but I'll explain more. And the fifth, the fifth focus area is on festivals. So circle time, let's start with that. I have had several videos on my channel if you're interested in a Waldorf circle time. I go into the different content that I use and I also have a sample of what our May circle time looks like. So circle time is something that my kiddos and I are very familiar with. We've been doing it for a couple years now. Not much will change going into the new year. In fact, I already have planned out all of our, um, our monthly um, so, uh, stories and finger plays. So I'm going to keep them mostly the same as last year. Uh, the reason why I do that is because children like the repetitiveness of it. it gives them comfort knowing where they are in the year based off of the songs that they're already familiar with. So they kind of know where they are and what seasons come next and things like that. I have a few new ones that I'll probably throw in just to switch it up a little bit and not make it so monotonous, but circle time I'm pretty good on. You could see my other videos, you could see my blog posts if you're interested in more information on circle time. I will say that the book that I primarily use for circle time is called A Child Seasonal Treasury and that's by Betty Jones. So circle time pretty much already done, but I will go through and just tweak some areas. My next area of content, which is probably going to be the area that I focus on the most is our story time uh, content. Story time in a Waldorf kindergarten classroom and throughout all Waldorf education is different than just sitting down and reading books together. That is hugely purposeful and still highly prized in a Waldorf setting. We still will read books every single day. That's just part of what we do, but story time is a little different for Waldorf education. Story time. So I've talked before about how Waldorf education believes that children are not just their intellect, that they're also a spirit or an emotional side to them, and they're also a body, all three of which, the mind, the body, and the spirit, we have to nourish. And so in order to do that, in order especially to, to, to influence a child on their spiritual or emotional level, we tell stories. And storytelling is where the teacher or myself, um, you memorize a story, you learn it by heart. It doesn't mean you have to learn every single word, but you get the general gist and then you tell the story. There's a vast difference in my children. They're very attentive when we read books, but they almost cross into this different dreamlike trance when I'm telling a story. So we connect, our, our, our spirits are almost connecting because I'm looking them in the eyes. Um, typically there's little songs involved. Um, they will maybe do little finger plays as well to engage their bodies. And I also, uh, I'm in the process of making them right now, but I would typically use puppets as well. I've only done this a few times in the past. And there was such a 
great response from my children. Like I said, they were just so emotionally involved in the story when we're locked eyes and we're communicating on a deeper level. Um, so that's the area I wanna focus on the most. So how am I doing that? So first of all, it's important to know what Rudolf Steiner said. He said in the education of children about this age range and stories. So he said, when telling all kinds of stories to little children before the age of seven, our aim cannot be more than to awaken delight, liveliness, and a happy enjoyment of the story. So that's all we're looking for. There doesn't have to be a deeper level. There doesn't have to be a moral to the story. They'll get all of that later, but that's what I'm focused on. And I'm looking at um, some Grimm's fairy tale stories. I'm looking at some Hans Christian Andersen stories like the ugly duckling and things like that. And some traditional um, fables like the three Billy Goats Gruff and Chicken Little. Those are the types of stories that we'll be looking at. I also don't need a story for every single day. Um, children love repetition, especially when it's something deep and emotional like storytelling. So really I'm just looking at gathering about 25 to 30 stories for our entire year. And I am working on kind of these generic puppets that I can add little accessories to that would work for hopefully any story. Um, I'm using Toy Making Magic. It's a subscription service that you can sign up for and she teaches you how to make these little puppets. That's what I'm using, but I've used peg dolls in the past. And you can kind of just look around and see what you have available for telling stories. So that's the biggest area of focus for me for content for next year of what I'm planning. So then I said that the next area I'm focused on is handwork. So handwork in a Waldorf classroom typically would involve things like weaving, finger knitting, uh, using natural dyes of some sort, uh, paper crafts, wet felting, and these things, not only do they help the physical body um, for the child, they, like, they help with crossing the midline, something that they're going to need uh, to really work on for reading and writing, but they also learn how to make purposeful items, which I think is such a special thing for a child to learn how to do. So for instance, my son just did a weaving project and he was really good at it. He's five at the moment and he has a little loom that I made him and he wove this tiny little rectangle and I taught him how to fold it in half and he learned how to do like a whip stitch down the side essentially. And he learned how to finger knit real quick, a little band to go across. And he uses it as like a little pouch for his nature findings when he's outside or anything that he has around the house that he wants to carry around. So he's learning how to do something with purpose. So I have to kind of plan out what types of um, handwork will we do. I saw there's like thread spinning where you take wool, like um, you, you basically take the wool and you attach it to a stone and you have a stick and the stone spins and weighs it down and it creates yarn or string, which is really cool. That's in my, my plans some more finger knitting projects, things like that. So that's another area of content that I'm focused on for next year. And then just two more, watercolors. I'll mention them briefly. Right now, my children love watercolors, but they're not doing them in the traditional Waldorf fashion because frankly, they cost money and um, it's something I'm saving up for for this upcoming year. So we've just been using like paper from Target and we've been using like the $2 um, uh, Crayola watercolors, but it's not the same experience as the traditional Waldorf watercolors, which at the young ages, like where my children are now, they start with wet on wet watercolors. Um, remember that especially at this age, we're trying to preserve the wonder of childhood magic of childhood and celebrating that and wet on wet watercolors does that exceptionally well. So you need higher quality watercolor paper. Um, I'll probably get like the Strathmore um, nice quality water paper and you soak that in water and then you take that wet piece of paper and put it on uh, typically a wood board. That's something I'm looking to make before the school year and um, 
children are typically introduced one color at a time. So let's say I give them blue watercolors, they can put that watercolor on the page and then the paint and the water make the magic for them a little bit and they can see how the paint moves and flows throughout the paper. So I want them to have that wonder and I want them to connect with art on a real emotional level. And I think that watercolors will do really well for that. So it's not a lot of planning I have to do, it's more getting the supplies in. So that's another area. And then last but not least, festivals. Festivals are huge in Waldorf education. I have videos on uh, Waldorf rhythm. I have blog posts on Waldorf ry rhythm and how rhythm is so important to children and to adults as well. But seasonal ry rhythms are typically marked by festivals. So if you think about it, you probably throughout the year, you feel your own festivals, right? You're already prepared. Your body starts to prepare before your mind even knows it. It's almost like the first Christmas, Christmas of um, an autumn breeze and you're ready for sweaters and pumpkin lattes, right? Festivals help you with the, especially children, mark the passing of the year. So we do our traditional festivals like birthdays and different celebrations like um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, um, Valentine's Day, Easter. Those are things we traditionally celebrate anyway. But um, last year I worked on adding two traditional Waldorf festivals to the year. I'll go into why they're important later. In fact, one of them I've already done a whole video on, but one of them that we incorporated last year is Michaelmas. Um, I'll probably be doing a blog post and video about that coming up in September. Um, but we incorporated a Michaelmas festival. We had about 18 children over to our house and we celebrated all together, which was really cool. And then the other festival that we celebrated that was new to us was May Day. That was just back in May that we celebrated that. So um, I have a whole video and blog post about May Day as well. So you're more than welcome to check those out. And we did those with our Wild and Free group. So with all that being said, I introduced two new festivals last year. I already have the basic structure and framework for those going into this year. So we'll still do those. So two others that I, I want to just focus on two more this upcoming year. One is Martin Miss. It kind of falls at a crazy time of year. Martin Miss is typically the Feast of St. Martin. Um, and there's a story about how he was a Roman soldier. And as he was entering into this city, he saw a beggar on um, a beggar and he gave him, it was a cold winter night. He gave him half his cloak. And then um, that's, it's, that's, I'll go into more of that as the year goes on, but that's one of the festivals. It typically ends up being a lantern festival in November. So that's one that I really wanna focus on. And then um, the other one that I wanna focus on is one that we've done before, but it just got away from me this year and that's Candlemas. So, Candlemas is celebrated February 2nd, the same day as Groundhog's Day, and marks the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. So um, that's another festival that I wanna celebrate. So I'm not going over the top, making sure that I do every single Waldorf festival that there possibly is. I mean, there's only a few more that might be out there, but um, those are the two that I wanna add this year. So all in, those are the five areas of content that I'm focusing on this summer to prepare for this upcoming school year for our Waldorf Homeschool Kindergarten. Just to recap, circle time, which I have pretty much ready to go, story time, which is what's going to take up the most of my preparation and planning, um, handwork projects, trying to figure out which ones we'll do and make sure I have supplies in for that, uh, watercolors, mostly just making sure I have supplies in for that, and then the festivals, figuring out how I can incorporate Martin Miss and Candle Miss into our uh, year of festivals. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I do have a blog post regarding all of this on my website. So if you like this information, you can go to my website, beautifullighthome.com for more information and more details on how you can take Waldorf education and bring it into your home and make it more accessible. Um, 
And you can also, hopefully, if you like this enough, you can like and subscribe to my channel and share it with other people who may be interested. And then last but not least, I'm active on Instagram. So you can find me at Beautiful Light Home on Instagram, where I typically post a little bit more information there on our day-to-day -day life. So I'm so grateful for you joining me today and I can't wait to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.